we are gathered together today to honor the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and reflect on our nation's history. This national holiday has been created as a step towards understanding Canada's troubled history as we work towards healing the wounds of the past. The National Day of Truth and Reconciliation gives the public a chance to recognize and commemorate the intergenerational harm that residential schools have caused to Indigenous families and communities, and to honor those who have been affected by this injustice. It is only by understanding our past that we can move forward towards reconciliation. In truth, we stand and grow. Crescent School acknowledges that we are gathered upon and would like to honor the traditional territories of the Huron Wendat, the Patoon, the Haudenosaunee, the Mississauga of the New Credit First Nation, the Anishinaabek Confederacy, and the Metis Nation, and still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. We thank them for their stewardship of the land, and we are in solidarity with our Indigenous brothers and sisters as we move forward in reconciliation. Good morning. At Crescent, we are fond of talking about and reflecting on our core values of respect, responsibility, honesty, and compassion. Our values are central to who we are as a school of character. Today in particular, I am mindful of our values as we recognize and commemorate the history and legacy of residential schools as part of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. Throughout my life, as a student and now as an educator, I have been blessed to attend and work at schools that are focused on well-being, spiritually, physically, socially, and intellectually. Schools should be places where young people are given the tools and experiences they need to pursue any goal and to achieve any dream. Schools have a duty of care, the obligation to act in the best interest of a child and to cause no harm. Tragically, our history shows that this was not the experience for many Indigenous children in our country. Between 1876 and 1996, more than 150,000 children were forcibly removed from their homes and placed into residential schools. These actions were taken by the Canadian government under a misguided policy designed to assimilate Indigenous peoples into mainstream society. These schools were often far away from their communities. Students were not allowed to practice their culture or speak their language. They lived in overcrowded, unsanitary, and unsafe conditions. They suffered from psychological trauma, and many were physically abused and assaulted. We now know that many children never returned home at all. Orange Shirt Day and the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation are both commemorated today, September 30th. The latter recognizes the colonial legacy of residential schools, honors Indigenous survivors, and is an important part of the ongoing reconciliation process. Orange Shirt Day specifically recognizes the harm that the residential school system had upon children's sense of self-esteem and well-being. Today, I wear orange to acknowledge that every child matters, to celebrate the resilience of our Indigenous people, and to affirm my commitment to truth and reconciliation. Wait, wait, wait up, Phyllis Webster, Squest, Strachum Chatstam Slakun. I am speaking to you today from Shawetmuch Uluk, the land of the Shushua people in Williams Lake, BC. I am a third generation Indian residential school survivor. My grandmother attended for 10 years from 1925 to 1935. All of Granny's 10 children, including my mother, attended for 10 years from 1954 to 1964. I attended residential school in 1973-74. We all attended the St. Joseph Mission Indian Residential School, simply called the Mission, located just minutes from Williams Lake. My son also attended the last operating residential school in Canada when it closed in Saskatchewan in 1996. To tell my story, I was living with my granny as a child, and when I turned six in July of 1973, granny took me to town to buy me something new to wear for my first day of residential school. I chose a shiny new shirt. 
It was bright and exciting, just how I felt to be going to school for the first time. When I arrived at the mission, my shiny new shirt was taken away. No matter how much I cried and wanted it back, no one would listen. I never wore my shirt again. Thoughts of home and Granny's garden, fishing for salmon on the Fraser River, are all memories that helped me through that year at residential school. Although the mission remained open until 1981, I never returned. I was able to attend a one-room schoolhouse just minutes from Granny's house in Dog Creek. The memories of that orange shirt being taken away and the lack of caring by those who controlled us kept me from wearing orange for a long time in my life as the sight of orange would trigger memories of my experiences and the effects of my life from attendance at that school. I told my orange shirt story for the first time in April 2013 when preparation for when the Truth and Reconciliation Commission came to Williams Lake those involved with the event decided to honor the orange shirt as a symbol of the effects of residential schools and the need for Every Child Matters. Originally, Orange Shirt Day was focused on the Caribou Chalcotin region, but thanks to social media, it continues to grow and have a life of its own and has grown into what it is today. My orange shirt story is not unique. There were 150,000 children that attended the residential schools across Canada, and they or their families all have a story to tell of that experience. And now with the recent news of the confirmation of the 215 children announced at the Kamloops de Shehwetmach on May 27, 2021, another experience from those schools is brought forward. I, like many Canadians, have felt the emotional impact of those findings. But for the survivors, we have always known about the children who died in those schools. This is why I say confirmation instead of discovery. Even so, when I first heard, I felt like I had lost a family member and that's how much grief I felt. There are many more residential school sites to be searched and the number of missing children and unmarked burials will continue to rise. I'm still grappling for a way to make sense of it all and wondering how we are going to get through this. My thoughts and prayers go out to the families, to everyone across Canada, experiencing this unimaginable emotional pain. The missing children have awakened all of us to the reality of the history of this country. This year marks the first year of a National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and National Federal Statutory Holiday on September 30th. A day for thoughts and discussions on remembering, recovering, and reconciling. Orange Shirt Day is a day to have conversation about all aspects of residential school. It is a day to honor residential school survivors and their families and to remember those that didn't make it. And a day to highlight progress in the reconciliation of Indigenous people and Canadian society. These actions are necessary to bring about healing for the future relationship in Canada. We chose September 30th because September is the time of year the children were taken away from their homes and their families. We chose the 30th because we wanted teachers and students time to settle in, time for teachers to teach students about the history and time for us to plan an event. When I heard an elder say that September was crying month, I knew that we had selected the right date. When you wear an orange shirt, it's like a little bit of justice for us survivors in our lifetime and recognition of a system we can never allow again. Gukstjam, thank you for caring about what happened to us and thank you for participating in Orange Shirt Day, the first national day for truth and reconciliation in Canada. Gukstjam. Good morning, Crescent School. I'm Tucker Wilson. And I'm Evan Carter. We are honored to represent the student voice as we acknowledge Orange Shirt Day. One year ago, we dedicated ourselves to lead the Indigenous Action and Awareness Committee at Crescent. Our most profound experience was being able to have a meeting with Jesse Wente, class of 92. Jesse is Anishinaabe and a part of the Bear Clan. He shared important insights for us to better understand our relationships with Indigenous people. 
September 30th provides us with an opportunity to have right relations with our First Nation, Métis, and Inuit brothers and sisters. In building these relationships, we must never ask for more than we are willing to give. This is a day to honor the power of sustainability, the Indigenous way of thinking, and to commit to building our understanding, compassion, and allyship with Indigenous peoples. Every decision we make needs to make the future better for the next generation. And the decision for us to take this time today to honor Orange Shirt Day is one small step. We will now take one minute of stillness and silence to honor the survivors and victims of the former residential schools in Canada. We invite you to now take some time to reflect on our role as Canadians, to commit to building right relations. Each of you is invited to take a few minutes to think about why you are wearing orange today. I'm wearing orange today to remember and honor those who lost their lives at residential schools. And I'm wearing orange today to encourage reconciliation between the Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities. You will have some time today in a home group or metric group to consider your reflection. Make sure to record these thoughts on an orange post-it. These orange post-its will be collected and will come together in displays up and around the school. It will represent our commitment to truth and reconciliation. Thank you for your participation.